Without doubt, rapamycin is currently the most promising pharmaceutical currently under study with regard to its potential to extend both human lifespan and health span. Now for the record, I've been taking low dose rapamycin under a doctor's supervision for over a year now. I take a five milligram oral tablet once per week and although I've suffered no significant side effects other than very occasional mouth ulcers, in the light of some new study data which we're about to discuss, for now at least, I've decided to cease my rapamycin use. But first let me be clear, in no way am I trying to rate on rapamycin's parade and I do believe that its potential as an anti-aging compound is very real. And look, we currently have some extremely smart individuals such as Dr. Peter Artia and Dr. Alan Green who have both been studying and taking rapamycin for several years now without issues. However, I was somewhat alarmed when I came across a study published only a few weeks ago on the 7th of June which found the potential for rapamycin to accelerate the progression of Alzheimer's disease in those already suffering from the condition. Researchers from the University of Texas Health Science Center in San Antonio found that the oral administration of rapamycin to an Alzheimer's disease mouse model caused an increase in beta amyloid protein plaques. Now we know that beta amyloid buildup is a hallmark of Alzheimer's disease, so we can safely assume that's probably not an ideal scenario. The experiments were conducted on a specific strain of mice called 5XFAD, which is specifically used as a model for human Alzheimer's disease. Now we'll point out that previous study data has typically shown rapamycin to both improve learning and memory in aged mice. However, the San Antonio researchers found that following rapamycin treatment, a protein called TREM2 is dramatically diminished. Now TREM2 is present in microglia, which are immune cells located in the brain and spinal cord. The study's senior author, Dr. Manzur Bat, explained that TREM2 is a receptor located on the surface of the microglia and it enables those cells to engulf and degrade beta amyloid. Now the resultant loss of TREM2 in microglia, which followed treatment with rapamycin, was found to impair the vital function of amyloid degradation, which in turn caused the buildup of those harmful beta amyloid plaques in the brain. So although rapamycin has proven benefits in a clinical setting in terms of suppressing the immune system in cases of organ transplant and as a tumor suppressor, in a situation where it negatively impacts on the expression of TREM2 or other critical proteins, it may in fact have a detrimental effect. Dr. Bat was on to caution that rapamycin's benefits in beta amyloid associated Alzheimer's must be studied further. I would suggest that the findings from his study give sufficient reason to at least pause testing rapamycin's anti-aging benefits on anyone either at risk of or currently suffering from Alzheimer's disease. However, that's simply my opinion and should not be misconstrued as medical advice of any kind. As I've already mentioned, I've decided to wait until further human data becomes available before considering recommencing low-dose rapamycin use. Hopefully, the proposed Healthy Human trial being organized by fellow YouTuber Dr. Brad Stanfield will reach the half million dollar donation amount required to commence and complete the study. Then, hopefully we'll have some sound data available that we can then combine with further neurological studies, all of which will help us to reach a more qualified conclusion regarding the safety and efficacy of rapamycin with regard to slowing human aging and extending health span. But until then, I would advise extreme caution by anyone considering the off-label use of this pharmaceutical. Many thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this presentation then please like, subscribe and comment. You'll instantly have my love and gratitude. Please take care, be healthy and see you again soon.